Hi, my name is Gagan. Let's go through a step-by-step -step guide where you will learn the essential quantitative risk assessment formulas for the CISSP exam and the real-world risk assessment as a cybersecurity professional. These calculations are key for passing cybersecurity exams and making smart security decisions in your workplace. The foundation of quantitative risk assessment is calculating the annualized loss expectancy. But before we get there, we need to understand several key components that go into this calculation. These are asset value, exposure factor, single loss expectancy, annualized rate of occurrence, and then finally you'll be able to calculate annualized loss expectancy. First is asset value. This represents the monetary worth of whatever you're trying to protect. This could include hardware like servers and networking equipment, software and applications, data, which is often your most valuable asset, intellectual property, and even less tangible assets like company reputation. For example, a customer database for an e-commerce company might be valued at $2.5 million. This includes both the direct cost of infrastructure, about $500,000 for servers, storage, and software, plus the business value of $2 million representing the revenue generated from these customers annually. When determining asset value, be comprehensive but realistic. Work with business stakeholders to ensure your valuations align with business priorities. Next is exposure factor. It is the percentage of an asset's value that would be lost in a single security incident. It's expressed as decimal between zero and one. For example, a ransomware attack on a file server might have an exposure factor of 0.7 or 70%, while a brief DDoS attack on the same server might only have an exposure factor of 0.2 or 20%. The exposure factor varies significantly based on the type of threat, your existing controls, and recovery capabilities. Let's consider a data breach affecting a payment database. The exposure factor could be as high as 0.9 or 90% when you factor in regulatory fines, legal settlements, customer notifications, and reputational damage. Now that we understand asset value and exposure factor, we can calculate the single loss expectancy. This represents the monetary loss from a single occurrence of a threat. Single loss expectancy can be calculated by multiplying asset value and exposure factor. For example, if your database server is valued at $100,000 and a ransomware attack would impact 60% of its value, so you multiply these two values, giving us $100,000 multiplied by 0.6, $60,000. This means a single ransomware incident would cost your organization approximately $60,000. Next is the annualized rate of occurrence. It represents how often an event is expected to occur in a year. It is calculated as number of occurrences divided by number of years. For example, if an event happens once every four years, the annualized rate of occurrence would be 0.25. If it happens three times per year, the annualized rate of occurrence would be three. Annualized rate of occurrence is typically based on historical data from your organization, industry statistics, and threat intelligence specific to your sector. For example, phishing attacks that successfully compromise employee credentials might have an annualized rate of occurrence of three, for a mid-sized organization, meaning you can expect about three successful phishing attacks annually. Meanwhile, a severe data center flooding even might have an ARO of 0.083, indicating this might happen once every 12 years based on environmental risk assessments. Finally, we reach annualized loss expectancy. This is expected yearly monetary loss for a specific threat to a specific asset and it's the foundation for cost-benefit analysis of security controls. To calculate annual loss expectancy, you multiply single loss expectancy with annualized rate of occurrence. Let's work through a complete example. Imagine your organization has a database server valued at $100,000. Security analysis suggests that a successful ransomware attack would impact about 60% of its value. The likelihood of such an attack is estimated at once every four years. So your asset value is $100,000, exposure factor is 0.6 or 60%, single loss expectancy, which is asset value multiplied by exposure factor, that gives you $100,000 multiplied by 0.6, $60,000, and your annualized rate of occurrence is 0.25 because it's once every four years. 
So now you analyze loss expectancy, which is a single loss expectancy multiplied by annualized rate of occurrence gives you $60,000 multiplied by 0.25, a total of $15,000. This means the organization can expect to lose approximately $15,000 per year due to this specific risk. Understanding annualized loss expectancy allows you to make informed decisions about security investments. If a security control costs less than the annualized loss expectancy and effectively mitigates a risk, it's generally worth implementing. If it costs more, you might want to consider other options or accept the risk. For example, if implementing advanced ransomware protection would cost $10,000 annually and the annualized loss expectancy for a ransomware attack is $15,000, the investment makes financial sense. This approach allows you to prioritize security investments based on financial impact, justify security spending to executive leadership, and make data-driven decisions. And there you have it. You now understand the fundamental formulas for quantitative risk assessment in cybersecurity. Remember, asset value is what your asset is worth. Exposure factor is the percentage impact from a single incident. Single loss expectancy is a monetary loss from one incident. Annualized rate of occurrence is how often the incident happens per year and annualized loss expectancy is your expected annual loss from that specific risk. This knowledge puts you ahead of many professionals in the field and gives you a powerful tool for making and justifying security decisions. If you found this information valuable, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more cybersecurity content, which is designed to help you advance your career and also pass the CSSP exam. I'm more than happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. Thank you.